Hey everyone. As you know, it can be really helpful to understand the financial health of a company when creating an algorithm. The easiest way to do this is by looking at a company's three main financial statements. These statements are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Today, we're going to talk about the first one, the income statement. Unlike the balance sheet, which is point in time, the income statement covers a period of time, often an entire year or just a quarter. The income statement contains information about a company's net income in addition to information about both revenue and expenses. Now let's jump into how to read an income statement. The income statement is often split into two sections, an operating section and a non-operating section. Let's start with the operating section of the income statement. The operating section of the income statement contains information on the primary business lines of a company. For example, if a company produces laptops, information relevant to its sale of laptops would show up in the operating section of the income statement. The actual revenue associated with the sale of laptops would be the very first line in our income statement. Following that would be cost of goods sold, often abbreviated COGS. These are the costs associated with the production of laptops, but does not include things like sales costs or administrative costs. COGS is truly the cost of the materials that go into producing these laptops. Once subtracting COGS from revenue, we get to gross margin. Gross margin is our profit before deducting non-product operating expenses, which we'll get to next. One of these non-product operating expenses is selling, general, and administration. That's often abbreviated SG&A. SG&A are costs associated with producing laptops, but not the cost of the actual materials that go into the final product. For example, something like office rent or the cost of an HR employee would be things in SG&A. As you can see, those are costs associated with producing laptops, but not the cost of the actual material that goes into the good. Another one of these non-product operating expenses is depreciation and amortization. These are expenses associated with using fixed assets over the period of our income statement. For example, if a company built a $40 million laptop manufacturing plant that was supposed to last 20 years, each year of our income statement, we would deduct $2 million in expenses to account for using that plant over its 20 year useful lifetime. Now let's jump into the non-operating section of the income statement. The non-operating section of the income statement contains information that is not related to a company's primary business. For example, if a company rented out an unused portion of its manufacturing plant to another company, that would show up in the non-operating section of the income statement. Additionally, things like interest expenses or other unusual or infrequent expenses would show up in the non-operating section of the income statement. This is helpful to the reader because it helps you isolate the performance of a company's primary business line from any other unrelated activities that still ultimately affect net income. Beneath this is a company's earnings both before and after taxes, and at the very bottom of the income statement is earnings per share, which is a company's net income divided by the total number of outstanding shares. This lets the shareholder know what their portion of net income is. So how is the income statement actually used in finance? Well, the total net income of a company is used to evaluate its performance. Investors and analysts will look at profitability and how profit levels have changed over time in order to do this. In particular, the earnings per share metric is used to compare companies within the same industry. Another thing that's interesting about the income statement is that it can be used to assess where a company is spending its money and how that has changed over time. Investors will often make estimates or predictions about the earnings that a company ultimately will report. These predictions affect the market's view of a company before it officially releases its earnings at the end of a quarter or a year. On Quantopian, the income statement can be used in a bunch of ways. The fact that Fundamentals dataset contains a number of fields derived from the income statement, such as earnings per share. Additionally, the fact that estimates dataset contains information on analyst estimates. Using these two datasets, you could seek to create a strategy that predicts a company's earnings before they actually report them. You could look to find when a company could surprise or disappoint the market. Well, that's just one example of how to use these datasets. If you want to learn more about exploring data on Quantopian, please feel free to check out other videos in this channel. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to learn more.